Hi, I'm Lisa Hasia here at the Soul Blazing Sanctuary, and I'm here with Lee Aronson. So I'm going to share a little bit about who Lee Aronson is. Over the last 30 years, Lee Aronson has served as a writer and or producer on some of the most successful, well-known sitcoms of our era, including The Love Boat, Who's the Boss, Murphy Brown, Grace Under Fire, Sybil, and The Big Bang Theory. Currently, he is the executive producer of the CBS hit comedy, Two and a Half Men, which he co-created. Mr. Aronson has been nominated for four Primetime Emmy Awards, as well as Producers Guild Award. He's won a Golden Globe Award and three People's Choice Awards, plus several ASCAP Awards for co-writing the Two and a Half Men theme song. Hi, Lee. Hi. <laughs> what, is, what does that feel like to hear back who you are and what you've done in your life? Well, you know, condensing it into a, a, a 59 year long life into, you know, one paragraph is got to leave out a lot of stuff. But, uh, you know, you hit the highlights. OK, so I want to ask you four questions. OK, so what is the single greatest piece of advice you've ever received? Put down that crack pipe. Yep. <laughs> OK, <laughs> can you? <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> Can I elaborate? Yeah. <laughs> I was smoking a crack pipe and my father said, put down the crack pipe and go to rehab. And uh, that was probably the best piece of advice I got in my life. So maybe you could add a little more with the second oh. question of what is the biggest well, self-growth well, well, Let me go back. I mean, seriously, um, uh, my career got sidetracked um, at an early stage because of drugs. I'm, I was very successful, very young. And uh, as happens to a lot of young people who make too much money too fast um, and didn't really feel inside that they deserved it, uh, I tried to fill up the hole with anything that I could. And that included, uh, you know, that included drugs. And uh, pretty soon uh, the drugs became more important than the career. So I uh, basically walked away from the career to do the drugs. And it wasn't until I gave up the drugs, got sober, and uh, really put a lot of work into it, that I restarted my career and basically began my life all over again. Okay, yeah, I was going to say that would probably be the answer to question number two of what is the biggest self-growth hurdle, weakness, or setback you had to overcome to get to where you are today? Well, in terms, yeah, personally, that probably was it. There have been a lot of big bumps, you know, being fired by Civil Shepherd. Uh, you know, having Charlie Sheen self-destruct. Those have all been professional hurdles to overcome. Okay, and how did you overcome them? Uh, I don't think I overcame them. I allowed life uh, to proceed on life's terms. And rather than, you know, what was, I think one of the biggest things I've learned over the course of my career is uh, to you know, control the things that are within my control, mm -hmm. but uh, not to angst over the things that are not in my control. And uh, certainly the behavior of stars, you know, on a major television show is not something I can control. So um, I really didn't do anything except sit back and, you know, watch the movie and wait to see how it was going to turn out, you know, and keep myself uh, in as positive and productive a place as I could. So your advice to my audience would be? My advice is uh, see which way the river is flowing and go with that, you know, instead of trying to fight the current or trying to make the river flow in your direction. That's great advice. I've actually taken it. You've given that advice to me and it works. It really does. And that's something, you know, that's something you can impart you know, to the people who listen to you is they already have everything they need. Yeah. If they don't have it right now, they don't need it. They may want it. Um, but even when I first got sober and I was broke and unemployed, uh, I had everything that I needed uh, on a daily basis. Uh, yeah. You know, so everything else is just gravy. So what does it take to be in the top 1% of your field and be happy? Uh, well, to be any place in my field and be happy, you know, takes a, uh, a certain mindset because most people in the entertainment industry are not happy. So, um, you know, it, it takes a realistic outlook on life that uh, success doesn't make you happy. Money doesn't make you happy. Uh, if you're happy 
without money, uh, you're going to be happy with money, hopefully. Uh, money can make you more unhappy, but I'll tell you something. Uh, you know, if, if you weren't happy before you got money, you're not going to be happy when you do get money because all money does in that circumstance is prove to you that what you thought was going to make you happy isn't. And uh, that's even more depressing than not having it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so what do you want your legacy to be? My legacy, boy, um, you know, there's my work legacy, my personal legacy it, to me is more important. My kids, um, you know, what I leave behind in terms of human beings and, mm -hmm. you know, human capital, you know, uh, aside from the, you know, whatever couple of hundred episodes of Haha -Ha that uh, my name is on. You know, I want my legacy. My legacy is uh, what's important to me is not my worldwide legacy. It's the legacy I leave to my friends, you know, the people who knew me and uh, my children and what they'll pass on. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, the person I am, if I'm a good person now, I was a good person when I was broke. And uh, uh, if I wasn't a good person then and I'm not a good person now, being successful to me doesn't make up for it. You know, there's a lot of successful assholes. And quite frankly, for, for a period in my life, I thought that was the deal, that uh, uh, the, the, the goal was to become successful enough so that you could be an asshole uh, with impunity, because that, that seemed to be the way other people played the game. And, you know, a lot of people do play that game, um, but there's not a lot of satisfaction in that, I got to tell you. Yeah, I believe it. I've seen it. <laughs> I've witnessed it. Yes. Yep. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to give me this interview, Mr. Aronson. Well, you're welcome, Mrs. Aronson. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I will see soon. you later. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye.